Okay. Can I first I like ask to highlight you? Okay. Very <laughs> short, because it's just a question because I want to ask uh, Felipe and Von, guys that have been in the military. If you're doing a coup inside the country, <laughs> far inside the country, with 25,000 people, how long can you hold without getting new supplies? Um, I'd say Wagner, as they organize, they, they rely more in trains, so not too much if they need to move a long way. So the move to Moscow from whatever region they were in near in Ukraine was a bit iffy. It must have been planned a lot. If you want to move a simple convoy like 150 kilometers, you need six to 10 hours if you want to move them quickly. And that's not mechanized troops. So you need to be on basically uh, infantry fighting vehicles that are wheeled that you can use on the roads. If you want to use tracked ones, you need to transport them by train because uh, they consume a shit ton of gas. Or, uh, or yeah, you need you need a train station. So the moment they want to stop you, they just blow up the trains and you lost your armor columns. So it's not yeah. a lot. There the now they just... by truck. Yeah, if, if you yeah. go yeah, by I truck, mean, you, you, you normally don't announce it. Go into a city, <laughs> take the parliament, yeah. take the president, and then you announce the coup. Not just announce it before. If you announce it before, normally you want to. Yeah, usually you see people. like the units moving through the streets and people don't know what's going on. Then the coup is announced. Yeah. So it's not like, uh, hey, take pictures of us while we pose next to this BTR yeah. and aim our guns at this building. I mean, there's like in that one video, there's a lady standing there with like a huge balloon bouquet. <laughs> That's already a reason. I, I would like to come up with the. Like yeah. yeah should, give me a. Yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, I would like to highlight to uh, because I think this question is very fundamental that uh, how they could organize a coup. Uh, one is, uh, I hope you know what was uh, lying in uh, this uh, Rostov and Don. It's a uh, it's, uh, military district. It's a huge command with controls two fleets, I think one in the uh, Caspian, one in the Black Sea. It has three armies, uh, you know, where each, you know, with, I don't know how many thousands of, uh, so there were three uh, combined arm armies. Uh, headquarters and I'm sure all troops are not committed uh, with Ukraine. So and uh, if Wagner is trying to uh, you know do a coup with 25,000 militarily, it is absurd. Number one. Number two, you start marching uh, uh, through a, you know a road uh, to Moscow. So uh, you know that in military vehicles you generally require refueling after every uh, 200 kilometers because that's the amount of uh, I think it may be 100 kilometers where you require refueling. So were you expecting, you know, the petrol pumps uh, or the gas pumps uh, or the gas station, the way to give you uh, Russian uh, military could always, you know, block it with air and all that. So it not have been definitely somebody was planning. It looked very, very absurd. And then you are going and capturing uh, some part of uh, Rostov and Don, which is uh, which is a very huge military headquarters. With uh, it's a huge command. I think he commands something like uh, 300,000 troops. The commander in uh, Rostov and Don. Uh, all not committed, but definitely they would have had reserves. Then you are executing from a better location, getting organized, and then going for a coup. So these are, you know, some of the things which you create confusion. The other is uh, about President Putin's speech. Uh, do you remember George Bush making a speech after 9/11? Somebody recalls at the highest level, and we in Pakistan, uh, you know, we still believe that uh, it was uh, it was a false flag. Uh, what happened uh, on 9/11? And then the president comes, you know, uh, he was in a school, I think, in a kindergarten reading a book which was inverted. And then he comes up and makes a speech uh, and then, you know, things starts uh, rolling up. So you can always expect during war, a president in case uh, it's a strategic deception uh, doing it. So maybe uh, I'm wrong, but I still feel that somehow this school thing uh, and then setting in 24 hours and nobody's killed. There are no casualties and suddenly, you know, everything is hunky-dory. So I still feel that it is part of uh, a very large and it has given a lot of benefit, as we have discussed. If you look at it, how much it has benefited uh, to uh, Putin in terms of internal control, uh, to his allies, then also to identify how the, military, how the uh, you know, world leaders are reacting. So I'm sure we must be very clear now what kind of messages are coming from media. To break the info ops, uh, you know, absurd theater of the West uh, is myth. And uh, then demoralize the Ukrainians because they were, imagine that you are uh, hoping that 
uh, tomorrow morning you know it will be a victory for ukraine suddenly you find that actually it has become a monster with more forces so still uh, i don't know because i i still feel that we have to wait for another 48 hours and why prigozhin who is declared traitor who is declared an archist uh, he should have been shot actually is given a passage and some, somebody said that will dent that uh, putin's reputation so why you know he is allowed i don't know how many troops will go to uh, belarusia because there is a side stepping of forces taking place and in this fog i tell you uh, nobody will exactly know how the positioning is done for uh, those troops which are mobilized to crush the rebellion and those who were already part of it there is a lot of movement and i think this is one of the best strategic deceptions that i have seen in my lifetime